Amen. Go ahead and be seated. I think I'm live. Can you hear me? All right. So I am live. So I have a set of car keys up here. And most of you know that we have moved and all that fun stuff that goes along with moving. But I, if I were to hand Dan Calvert these keys or Charles or Lee or Young John, if I was going to hand you these keys and say, which key unlocks the door to the church, how many of you would know exactly which key? Okay, That's because we all have different keys. But now, what if I were to say, one of these keys unlocks the door to our old house, and one of these keys unlocks the door to the new house, and there's five keys that look exactly alike. Which one fits? How many of you would know? Nobody. You might have a lucky guess. So here's what I did. I put a blue thing on it. You know why? Because when you're carrying a box or you're just exhausted, you have a deadbolt and a door handle, you want to turn the key because the key fits. You unlock it, you unlock it, you open the door, and you're in. That's how it is with God's Word. There is one key that fits everything in the kingdom of Christianity, in the kingdom of Christ. And oftentimes, we have this whole key ring full of, full of ideas, ideologies, upbringings, things that, that, that we have, have allowed to, to attach to us or that we've clung to that we've turned into keys in living the Christian life. And God is, is sitting there going, what on earth are they doing? Why would they believe that when they have this? Why would they do this if I did that? So I want us to continue this morning looking at Proverbs because the more I look at Proverbs chapter 3, the more in awe I am of God and how he spoke to one person person in such a way that if you take the time to, to, to read it and to sit on it and to pray about it, God has brought so much wisdom through his word by the King Solomon that doesn't just apply to his son, that applies to every person who breathes. Because God's ultimate desire is that everyone come to the saving knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. And that they confess their sin, they repent of their sin, and they, they ask God to receive them into his kingdom through that repentance by what Jesus Christ did on the cross and the seal of the Holy Spirit that resides in the heart of believers. And so when, we, when, you, when we've done that, if, if you're there, then... The words of Solomon in Proverbs, in all of Proverbs, but Proverbs chapter 3, they're life-changing because he gives you the key to walking rightly with God. And if we miss that, then we're always going to be faltering. We're always going to be teetering. We're always going to be wondering and doubting. So I want to go back, and I just want to very quickly remind us of, of the last two Sundays and the first part of verses 1 through 4, it was about walking rightly with God. And so let me just read that. My son, do not forget my teaching, but have your heart comply with my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and a good reputation in the sight of God and man. So Solomon is, again, I just let me set the scene. He's, he's talking with his son. They might be sitting there. They might be walking through uh, the palace. They might be walking through the vineyards. Uh, who knows? They, they might be sharing a glass of water or something. But Solomon is imparting his son, which ultimately would be anyone who reads, but that's his target, with, son, if you want to live a life that is full, if you want to live a life that is pleasing to the God we worship, the God that you love, then you need to do these things. Because if you do these things, your life will be so much better. And your walk with God will not seem futile. 
And then he goes on in verses 5 and 6, and he says, um, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. So walk rightly, son, and you walk rightly by trusting the Lord. Trusting in his goodness, trusting in his, in his word, trusting in, in his sovereignty. Look at other people and see how God is, has, has worked in their lives, how he's blessed them, how he's chastened them. Those God followers, because they weren't Christ followers then, they were waiting for the promised Messiah, so they were following Yahweh, they were following the, the word, the law. And so Solomon is saying, simply trust the Lord and he, he won't just tell you where to go. He'll show you where to go. He'll direct your paths. And by the way, son, man, don't think you're smart. Stop. Don't lean on your own understanding because your own understanding, most of the time, if you're walking rightly with God, your own train of thought, your own ought is going to clash with God's you should, you must. If you want the life that I promise you, God says, then you've got to trust in me. You can't lean on what you think and what you know because you'll get tired, son. You'll get angry. You'll get discouraged. And all of those different aspects of being a human, they will, they will lead you to the place of questioning whether or not I'm, God is faithful. So don't trust yourself before you trust God. Now let me just say this is probably one of the most important parts of the whole book of Proverbs because the next verses that we're going to look into, Solomon is going to, he's not going to reiterate it, but he's going to drive the point home. So he begins in verse 7, do not be wise in your own eyes. Do not be wise in your own eyes. It's just like, come on, don't. Don't lean on your own understanding. Because if you lean on your own understanding, then you're going to think you're wise. And of all the people in the world, and I know I say this a lot, if, if all the, of all the people in the world that could say, don't pretend to be wise, it would be Solomon because he doesn't have to pretend. Because he is wise. Because God gave him that capacity and that ability to be wise. So when Solomon is speaking, he's not just speaking out of, out of his kingly experience or his own personal walk with God, yes, 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 and yes, but because God granted him the capacity to do what we don't have the capacity to do, which is to know what's best in God at the right time. And that's hard because we have to lean on God by trusting in him and not leaning on our own understanding. Because if we, if we lean on, on our un, own understanding, then we're going to think we're wise. And experience doesn't equate wisdom. Anybody ever made a mistake? Anybody ever lied? If you didn't raise your hand, you just lied. Just kidding. <laughs> we all err. Intentionally, unintentionally. We all fall short of God's glory. That's, the, that's what Christianity is about, is recognizing and admitting our need for sovereign someone, God, who knows more than we do, who understands more than we do, who ultimately is perfect. We need him to lead us. And so when we profess our faith in Christ, we are basically saying, God, you are at the top of my list. You're on the throne of my life. I will live my life through you as you live your life through me. So I will be faithful in following you, following your commands, following your directions, your directives, following your ways. Because you've already told me, God, that you will direct my paths. So when we submit ourselves to him then we literally are placing ourselves on the right path. So God, I'm, I'm submitting myself to you. I'm, I'm, I'm committing my life to you. I'm surrendering to you. That's putting us on the right path. 
and to stay on the right path, we have to trust God, right? We have to not lean on our own understanding. We have to, we have to not believe that we are smarter than God. I don't believe any of us would ever think we're smarter than God. But for someone on the outside looking in, when we make bonehead decisions that are contrary to God's word, then we're basically saying, God, I know better than you do because I'm doing it my way. Even though we would never be so flagrant in our disregard of God. And yet, oftentimes we do. Now, have you ever thought of why we do that? Have you ever thought of, of why you sin? I think of why I sin. And it's because I'm a bonehead. Because I want, at times, what Ray wants, and in total disregard for, for whatever. But that's part of life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's not just a, a, a come-to-Jesus verse. That's a Christian verse. That, that's a y'all come, because y'all are included in this. You're going to continue to sin as long as you're breathing God's oxygen. For all of sin and fall short of God's glory. So we're going to do it. But if we're on the path, and we're desiring for him to direct us, yes, we're going to sin. Yes, we're going to fall short for, of, of his glory. But if, if we don't acknowledge our sin, then we're going to continue to stay off the path. And so he says, I'll direct your paths, but... But you got to not think you're smarter than me. I mean, <laughs> just in a very human earthly sense, you're Solomon, okay? God has granted you the wisdom he hasn't granted anyone else. And the smartest person in town comes to you and says, King, I think you should do it this way. I've got a plan. And, and King, this plan differs from yours, but it's a better plan, King. Could you imagine being the king, knowing that God blesses everything that you do, knowing that he, he imparts knowledge and wisdom to have someone up, come, come to you and say, but, but I know better? Well, imagine God. When his own kids come and go, well, you know, God, <laughs> I think I can fly. Or I think I can do this. And God's going, no, no, no. And I don't know if God would call us a bonehead. He might, he, in love. But he says, you know, stop. Just stop thinking that you're smarter and better than I am. Because I'm sure that's what Solomon was thinking when all those people came up to him and tried to schmooze him and bring him all these gifts, thinking they could pull one over this old Israel king, Israelite king not realizing that God had granted him this awesome gift. So he says, again, don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. And this fear is, is not a, oh, I'm, so, I'm afraid, I'm afraid of, of disappointing, I'm afraid of hurting God. Has, that's, not, that's not the picture here. It's an, a sense of awe. It's living your life knowing that God is always right. He's always got the perfect plan and that he can do whatever he wants whenever he wants. You guys ever been on a small boat on the ocean? I haven't many times, but I remember Roy and I and maybe some of our other brothers were in, in Homer, Alaska, and we were on our uncle's, one of his fishing boats, and it was just a small boat. And we, we pulled out of the harbor and, you know, we, we moved closer and closer to no, nowhere, to nothing. And all of a sudden, the, the vast emptiness that is just the ocean began to kind of make this young guy's heart beat just a little bit faster. It's like waves were beginning to hit the bow and, you know, we, we were doing 30 or 40 miles an hour and he's like, you know, we're hitting crests and, and you know, our, our uncle who's been doing this since he was a kid. But out in the middle of nowhere, there, there's no safety. I mean, what if? What if that engine stopped? What if a squall blew in? What if? You know, there's always going to be stuff that we 
can't control that God does. See, we only, we only see the vastness of our own purview. And God sees everything. And so he says, guess what? He said, when you're in awe of me, when you fear me, when you recognize that, that out in the middle of that ocean on that little boat, I control everything. If I want to call the wind up, I'll call the wind up. If I want to sink your boat, I'll sink your boat. If I want to call a whale to swallow your whole boat, I'll call a whale to swallow your whole boat. Oh, you want an example? Just turn to Jonah. He didn't swallow the whole boat because Jonah was wise enough to jump overboard or to be thrown overboard. God is always in control. And so he says, fear me, be in awe of me. But not, not so fearful that you don't love me. Just recognize that I am the I am. I am the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And then he goes on and he says this. Turn away from evil. Because here's, here's, what, here's what Solomon knows. Solomon knows that when we pursue our own ways, then we're going to turn away from God. And not that that's inherently evil, but it will lead to that. And so he's saying, turn away from where you already are, which is off the path. Because if you allow yourself to, to be distracted and go off course, then the only recourse is to change your course to get back on the path. And so Solomon says, okay, don't think you're smart. Don't think you're wise. And again, here's... Here's, here's the scale. Here's Solomon. Here's Solomon. Here's God. Okay? God is all, right? He, he knows it all. He, but he gave Solomon the, this, this wisdom that brings Solomon above everyone else, all right? But Solomon still isn't bright as God. I mean, if you know by the scripture, you know Solomon's demise. And, I mean, Solomon couldn't take his own advice some, most of the time. But he's inspired by God to render advice and good advice, sound the theological and doc doctrinal uh, advice to, to his kids, to God's kids. And he says, so turn from evil, because if you don't turn from evil, then you're going to get shipwrecked. Because then all of a sudden, you are directing your paths. You are leaning on your own understanding. You're not trusting in the Lord. You're not acknowledging Him in all ways because you're such a train wreck over here. And all God says is, is stop it. Just stop it. Lift up your hands. We sang it. Lift, lift up your hands. Turn your eyes. Look, look to heaven. Look to me and let me put you back on the right course. Let me put you on the path that I'm already directing because God never stops directing our paths. Anybody impatient? I'm impatient. And a lot of people who've been around me lately through this move and all this realize that my impatience is, is, is not always a good thing. But God says, you know, Wait. Just, just turn, get on the course, get your feet steady, now walk. Now walk. And raise your hand, I'm, God, I'm walking, God, I'm walking. And he's like, slow down, because I want you to get everything. And then he shifts gears in the following verses. And I, I've, I've been really thinking about this. Why would he go from, from trusting your own understanding and, and leaning on God to this? Honor the, honor the Lord with your wealth. And from the first of all your produce... See, that's the next big part. 
But it's really easy to miss that verse that's in between. So let me read the verse that's in between. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth. So now let me put it all in a big ball. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. So you are set. Okay? You are where you need to be. And then he brings this up. Honor the Lord with your wealth. So why would the king of Israel, through God's direction, tell his son, do all these things. Oh, and by the way, with what you've got, honor the Lord. I wonder if it's because wealth and the perception of wealth can steer us very quickly off course. And take us down a path of disobedience. Because the reality is, is that if, if we're turning away from evil and we're not a, leaning on our own understanding and we don't think we're wise, then God's bringing about that, that, that healing, that maturing is really what that verse says, talks about, is that, that nurturing. And he says, so son, here's the next step. So I want you to honor me in your faith. I want you to honor me in your walk. But I want you, son, also to honor the Lord with your wealth. From all the first of your produce, then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. It's really tough to honor, Lord, honor the Lord with your wealth if you don't honor the Lord with your life. It's impossible. And if we're not on the right path, and if we're not walking rightly with God, if we're not trusting the Lord, and we're deceived about how bright and how wise and how intelligent we are, and we haven't turned away from evil, then we never get to this verse. Because we will always say, that's off limits. What's mine is mine. God has blessed me with it. And this is not, this is not about need. This is not a, about anything other than this is what Scripture says. That we have to be careful that we don't dishonor God with what He's blessed us with. Because here's the key. He's blessed it. He's blessed you with it. And that's no different than being out in the middle of, of Kachemak Bay in Alaska or in the Pacific Ocean on that little ship having to recognize that God is in sovereign, sovereignly in control of my boat, my future, my life, my drowning, my living, as he is with the wealth and what he's blessed us with. He expects the same mindset, the same surrender with that as he does with the rest of our life. So here's, here's what we have to understand is it's really important because wealth can wreck us and wealth can bless us. It all depends on which path we're on and which way we're walking because it's not about need it's about honoring lord that's why that's why solomon uses the word honor he says honor the lord with your wealth that is part of trusting the lord with all your heart because that's the hard one you see here's what god is god's a giver so it's not talking about just He's not talking about money. That's always in the equation because that's part of it. But he's talking about our time. Because time is the most valuable commodity that we have. How much time do we give to God? How much time do we give to honoring the Lord and, and loving Him with all of our heart and, and leaning not on our own understanding? And our checkbook comes into, into play. Do we honor God with what He's blessed us with financially? Because I'm sure when, when we read the word wealth, we think money, right? Or, or property or, or, or some, something else. But th this is, the, this is a, a holistic approach. Solomon's going, I want you, son. And remember, he's talking to his son. He's, he's saying, son, I want the very best for you. And this is how you get it. 
So he says, honor the Lord with your wealth. Now, why would God want that from us? Why would he want us to honor him with our wealth? Well, here's, here's the reason. Because we need to acknowledge that he's given us that. Because it's too easy to, for us to say, but God, I went to work and I worked 80 hours a week. I've, I've earned everything that I've made. I'm in control of that. And God says, you're the ship out in the middle of nowhere and you got your money bags and I'm going to sink your boat. So basically he says, shut up and listen. Sorry. Uh, quiet down and listen. Because it must be important to God or he wouldn't put it in here. And so he says, honor me with, with your wealth. Honor me with what I've blessed you with, what I've, what I've gifted you with. Because the word honor has this idea of sacrifice. So we're not talking about the tithe. That's another sermon. This is about sacrificial giving of your time, of yourself, of your finances, of whatever, because we're giving our entire existence and we're placing it in God's hands. And then he finishes up and he says this. I'll, let me go back to verse 9. Honor the Lord with your wealth and from the first of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. So he's talking about uh, the first is the, the principle of the first fruits. You give God the best. You give God from the top. So f for me, here's, here's, here's what I do. And sometimes I forget. When I get up in the morning, I pray. It's one of the first things I do in the morning is pray. I don't always make the time to, to have a, you know, a full, quiet time devotion. I usually do that in the car. But the first thing that I do is I give God my day. And there are some, you know, I'm just going to be honest, there are some days I, I wish I could get back. Because I, I don't like the outcome of those days. But here's what I get to rest on. If I gave it to God, and I'm walking with God, and I'm giving Him my all, then whatever that day brings... Guess what? That's what God wants. And I sit there and I go, really, God? Ah, do I have to go through this again? And he goes, yes. Sorry, son, you didn't learn your lesson. Ever felt like that? And then he says this, and I, I, I do want to end here. Then your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. So basically, God's saying... It, if you, and again, we're, we're talking about the wealth, if you'll honor me with what I've honored you with, I'll honor you more. This is not about health and wealth, though. This is about quality. Because the word wine there is, a, is not the normal wine word. That's the word that means it's the most potent. It's the best that could be had. So it's none of this, this new wine that they talk about. Which, where it's, no, he's talking about the good stuff. This is God. He's not talking about going out and getting drunk. He's talking about a blessing. I'm going to give you the very best from the vineyard. Because that's what they would have understood. Because it was an agricultural culture. So he says, I'm going to give you this new, the very best. I'm going to fill your barns. Now what goes in barns? A lot of stuff. Name it. Your boat could go in your barn. Your gold could go in your barn. Your sheep, your hay. But he says this. He says, if you'll do this, your vats, and that's vats, that word is barn, will overflow. It, it, it's this. I will give you more than you ever could have given yourself. But again, this isn't about health and wealth. This is about allowing God to honor us because we're honoring him because we're trusting in him by walking with him does that make sense is it pretty clear I, I i think it's pretty clear so god said again i'm just gonna i'm gonna just one more time we walk with god right because we trust god 
because God is God and we're not. And he's got a direction for us because he's God. And he says, if you walk in that direction, I will give you what I want you to have. And I want you to bless me with what I gave you. And I want you to bless others with what I gave you. Because when you're walking rightly with me and you're blessing me and I'm blessing you, I want to bless you more. But here's the catch. You can't be doing it because you want more. Because you want more stuff. Because if you want more stuff, then you're, you've missed the whole picture. It's like that old Etch-a-Sketch. You, you guys know the Etch-a-Sketch? Turn the little white knobs on that red red screen and, and, and you've built this thing and all of a sudden someone comes by and kicks the table and you're all your sand and it's like I spent all this time so you follow God that's what he wants don't lean on what you don't understand and we don't understand life but God does I'm going to ask if you'll stand this morning thank you for being here I, would, I want to thank all of you for praying for us. This, is, this has been a busy, hard week. Diane and I kind of realized that, you know, we realized that without God's provision, <laughs> we'd be lost. And a lot of times he meets our needs through each other. And so I just want to say how thankful I am for you. I'm so thankful that God has placed you in our lives, you in my life. And God, I'm just so thankful for you. Let me pray. God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for, for making a way for us, Father, to live and to love and to thrive and to, to question and to doubt and, and to trust. And God, you've, you just, you've made it so hard, you've made it, yet you've made it so easy. God, help us to get out of your way. Not be robots, but to be faithful children and servants of the living God of creation. God, help us to read the words in, in, in your word, in scripture, in the words of, of Solomon, the, the, the writer of Proverbs. God, that we would recognize that when we do life your way, the benefits and the consequences are exactly what you desire. And you love us so much that, that you'll allow us to see your truth as we walk in your direction. Thank you, God, for loving us. May we be faithful followers of Jesus today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're going to sing Jesus, Lord, to me. I want to thank Catherine and Trevor and Gary and Charlie and Brooke and, and um, my brain, Samuel and uh, whoever else sits back there week after week, Roy from kind of manning things from in there for our tech team a lot goes into our services. Um, you know, I know we do the in-house and monitor, but a lot goes into it. So thank you guys for your faithfulness from videos to, to you know, music and all that. It's just God has blessed us with some, with some very f faithful people. And so I appreciate that. And I also want to thank those of you uh, who prayed for us uh, in, in our move. But I also want to thank those that came out and helped us. I know a lot of people couldn't, and we got a lot of people that wished they could. And I'm thankful that you wish you could, but you should be glad you didn't. <laughs> but I want to thank John Waite. I want to thank Danielle and Jeff, Catherine and George, Sherry Miracle and um, Emma, Aiden and Maddie, Lana Ragel. Oh, we just, boy, what a blessing. Have I missed someone, Diana? Darlene and Roy. I th and if I miss you, I apologize, but thank you guys so much. But even more than that, I thank you for your prayers. We're not as young as we used to be. <laughs> we really aren't. And so I appreciate Jeff went out to the dump with me a couple times, and John's made some, some, uh, some runs. But again, I don't want to uh, linger, but thank you guys for your, your prayers and your help. Have a wonderful week. Um, don't forget next Monday, uh, next Monday, next Sunday is Mother's Day. We are going to have a Mother's Day meal, and we are going to be having children's church from here on in, unless Katie is, is not well. And then if Bambi's here, Bambi and Brad have agreed to, to fill in and to help. So we're going to try to make that very consistent. Um, also, if you feel or know someone that might 
feel led to teach um, a Bible study class for younger people, would you come talk to me or message me or call me or something? We, we have a, a need um, for uh, the rest of the spring and summer and maybe early fall. And uh, if you'd be willing to do that, um, I would certainly love to talk with you and pray with you about it. So let me pray for us and we'll go home. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your time, God, that you have blessed us with to where you are our captive audience. God, I pray that we would leave here this morning and that we would shut off the stream if we're at home watching or watching somewhere else, God, and just, um, just thank you, God. Thank you that we can have this time. Forgive us for our failures and for our sins. May we walk with you today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a great week.